Hey guys, what's up? This is Jason the Redhead Henry, and today is the first tutorial that we will be doing inside of After Effects. So, um, this is what we are going to be creating today. So, uh, kind of the stuff that we'll be covering today will be um, putting in some text, making some layers, uh, just some real basic keyframing, and some masking. So, I mean, these four things are, you know, pretty much essential. Uh, whenever you're doing any animation, regardless uh, whether it's a sprite animation or not. So I figured I'd start with the basics here today. So I'm just going to delete everything here. And uh, start with a new blank slate. So after you've opened After Effects, you're going to want to go up to Composition, New Composition. Or you can just hit Control n if you're lazy. Uh, I'm going to name this Composition Main Comp and you're going to want to make sure that the width is 640 and the height is 360 and it is locked at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Frame rate needs to be 30. Oh, also your uh, pixel aspect ratio needs to be square pixels. Uh, frame rate is 30 and I would recommend that you make this um, composition two seconds long so you can just type in two. And make sure that the background color is also black and then just say OK. So now, kind of review from last time, what that did was it created a new composition, and uh, you can see it on the stage, and also it's open in your timeline, and it also created it in your little project bin area over here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is uh, make the background first. So I'm going to go up to Layer, New, Solid, or you can hit Control y So... I'm going to name this solid BG for background. Make sure that it is a 640 by 360 uh, dimensions and it's locked at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Or, or again, if you're lazy, you can just click this little button right here that says make comp size and that'll automatically adjust this for you. And then uh, choose your background color. So you can choose whatever you want, but I'm just going to go with this dark red maroonish color and then just say OK. And now what that did was it created your new uh, layer, and you can see it on your uh, on your stage, and you can also see it now in your timeline. Created this new layer for you right here. Now, um, and it also created it in the uh, project bin for you under solids, your BG layer. So that's helpful. So now in your timeline, what you can do with this layer that you just created, you can effect the properties of this layer. So I'm just going to show you guys how you do this real quick. There's a little arrow right here next to this first red box. Just click that, click on transform, and that brings up all of your uh, transform properties for this layer. So if you wanted to move the position, you can move the position. You can adjust the scale. I'm just undoing all this by hitting Control Z. You can mess with the opacity, the rotation, and the anchor point. So, I, again, I'm a man of shortcuts, so I don't like clicking down through all these arrows. So let's say you wanted to just affect the position of this layer. So on your keyboard with this layer selected, I would simply just hit P. And that brings up the position property, so now you can move it around and set your keyframes and stuff. Um, if you wanted to mess with the scaling options, you would hit S, S for scale, and then you can mess with your scaling options. Um, for your opacity, that's a little uh, little different. You want to hit T, I guess T for transparency. I don't know why they wouldn't make it O. Um, so you can mess with that. That's pretty self-explanatory, though. So let's say, for example, that I was messing with the opacity and the uh, position um, for this layer. So if I had keyframe set for my opacity and my position, I could hit with this layer selected. All I would have to do is hit U on my keyboard and that would bring up both of those two um, uh, both, both of those two properties because I've set keyframes for them so whenever you hit U on your keyboard with your layer selected that will bring up your uh, anything that has a keyframe set, set with it okay so the first thing or actually also before we move on um, it's also really useful uh, to color code your layers like whenever I'm working in After Effects or any layer oriented uh, program for that matter uh, I like to have everything neat and organized and color coded so if you want to change the color of this layer you would simply click on this first red box right here 
and you can change the color of it uh, to whatever you want, yellow, brown. But again, I like to be uh, kind of neat and organized, so since it's a red layer, uh, I'm just going to leave it as a, as a red color. Okay, so we're going to create next this sort of uh, feathered uh, effect as if you're looking through a lens. So the first thing you're going to want to do is turn on your guide. So you'd come down right here to this little icon that says choose grid and guide options and then just click on title and action safe and that brings up your title and action safe guide for you. So now the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, we're going to draw in a oval shape on this layer and it's essentially just going to create a mask on this layer for us. So with this layer selected come up to the uh, toolbar and click on your ellipse tool. If you don't see the ellipse you can just uh, click and hold and then you can choose uh, your different shapes here but we're going to choose the ellipse tool and then we are just going to again make sure your layer is selected start in the upper left hand corner of this guide and drag it all the way down to the lower right hand corner. So now what we just did was we created a mask on that BG layer that we just made. So now we have this nice looking oval shape. I'm going to actually turn off my guide just to show you guys. And now what that did was it gave us some masking properties for this layer. So see how we have the we had the transform properties from before. Now we have these masking properties since we just created this mask. So now what we're going to want to do is um, mess with the masking property. So if you bring down these arrows, you can mess with the mask path, the feathering options, the opacity, and the expansion. So again, can't illustrate this enough. Mana shortcuts. With this layer selected, let's say you want to feather out uh, this layer, which is what we're going to be doing. Just simply hit F on your keyboard, and that brings up the masking feather option. So we're just going to, where these little zeros are, just click and drag it up. So that looks pretty good. It feathered out that layer and it's looking pretty nice. So now that's done and actually this um, background layer is pretty much complete so I'm just gonna lock this layer by clicking on this little lock icon in this little box that's underneath it. So now this layer is locked and we can't do anything else to it until we unlock it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is import some text, or sorry, uh, put in some text on the stage. So let's go up to our toolbar and just click on the text tool, and then just click anywhere on your stage and type whatever you want. I'm just going to type Redhead Henry, and uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm just actually going to go with an Arial font. If you wanted to change your font around, you can come over here to the Characters panel and uh, choose whatever font you want and uh, mess with your color and your scaling and stuff. So now you'll notice again too that it created a new layer inside of our timeline. So for the purpose, purpose of this tutorial, um, I don't like having both of these two red layers next to each other, so I'm just going to change the color of the text layer to say like blue or something that's, you know, different than red. And um, so that looks pretty good. So now what we're going to want to do is uh, this text, we're going to have it start off screen at the top and then just end off screen at the bottom. So we're going to position it at the top of the screen, just above your uh, composition. And uh, we're going to mess with the position properties uh, for this layer. So with the Redhead Henry uh, text layer you, just, you guys just created, just hit P and that brings up the position like we just talked about and we're going to set a keyframe at zero seconds. So this little stopwatch icon that's next to position, just click on that and that sets a keyframe for us in our timeline. It's this little diamond, yellow shaped diamond that we just got right here. So now let's say we wanna have this text uh, move from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen over the span of a second. So we're going to actually move uh, this little red, uh, Red, reddish orangish looking bar right here and uh, move it to the uh, the one second marker and uh, then we're just going to uh, actually there's a, a bunch of different ways you can do this you can set a new keyframe first if you want by clicking on this little diamond uh, that's right here between these two arrows 
and uh, then on your stage drag your text you can hold down shift if you want to make sure that it's all nice and straight and just drag it all the way down to about right there until it's completely off the uh, the stage so now you can see that over the span of a second it's moving down so I'm gonna undo that and hit control Z so I just undid that keyframe so now again if this bar is at the one second marker I don't even have to come over here and click that little diamond I can just select this text and just bring it down whoops sorry and that'll automatically create a keyframe for me I'm gonna undo that again and if you don't want to mess around on your stage with that if you have maybe too much going on or whatever you can actually just do it right here in the timeline and mess with the the X and the Y uh, property so where it says 26 for me I'm just gonna bring that down until it's off screen so it's really just personal preference or whatever you got going on so those are just you know some different ways of setting keyframes you can also uh, do it um, on your keyboard too but I'll get into that a little bit later let's say so now we got this uh, this nice looking you know starting at the top text and going to the bottom so how do you preview this well, if you remember from the last tutorial we just go over to our little RAM preview uh, box right here so you're just gonna click on this little triangular icon that says RAM preview and then it's just gonna preview out uh, this nice little you know epic looking text that's starting from the top and going to the bottom so now while we're on the topic of this uh, RAM preview if you just hit spacebar that stops it um, You'll notice that what it did was it kind of built out this green bar right here. That's sort of like the preview area. You can change the uh, the preview area by dragging this render bar, this little light gray bar. Uh, you can drag it down. So let's say you don't want to preview out the rest of this second because it's a two second composition, remember? And we really have a whole bunch of stuff going on that's in the first second. So now we have this leftover second that there's nothing really happening. So let's say you just wanted to preview out this first second. You can just move this bar, click on these little yellow boxes on the edge of the bar. And now let's say you just want to preview out the first second, RAM preview it again, and it's just going to play that first second over and over again. Or let's say you wanted to see, you know, just a different section, maybe from the midpoint. Play that again, it'll just play that section for you. So that's really useful. Um, to be able to to mess with that and preview out certain uh, certain points of your your video or animation. Okay, so yeah, Jason, that looks pretty cool. We got this awesome looking uh, text effect, but it's moving kind of slow, and there there isn't really much to it. So let's kind of beef it up a little bit. We're going to drag this keyframe that we just made at the one second marker. We're going to drag it all the way over to say around somewhere around ten frames. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of put it in between the 10 and 5 frame point here. So now when we preview this thing out, and actually we'll just preview out the first 10 frames, it's going a lot faster. But it's a little choppy because it's moving so quickly. <clears throat> so we're going to add some motion blur to this thing. So with this layer selected, um, actually the layer doesn't even need to be selected if you notice over here on the left you have all these little icons and stuff and I'll kinda get into uh, what they do a little bit later on but for now we are just going to uh, check the motion blur property so there should be a little icon that's got like three or four circles that says motion blur right underneath that there's just an empty box just click that empty box and now you've enabled the uh, motion blur for this layer now the thing is the motion blur for the entire video isn't turned on yet we've only enabled the motion blur for this layer we haven't turned on the actual motion blur so to turn on the motion blur you would click on this icon right here that's got like four or five little circles it says enables motion blur just simply click on that and then that turns on the motion blur for you now whenever I'm animating inside of After Effects whenever I have layers that have motion blur to them say I have a character um, who I want to have some motion blur to. I'll have his motion blur on, like I'll check it so that I don't forget, but I'll have the overall motion blur for the video off. Whenever I'm working inside of After Effects, or think should probably strongly recommend that whenever you do work inside of After Effects, turn your motion blur off, 
the overall motion blur because it will sometimes slow down your computer depending on your computer specs and everything or how much you have going on in your composition and how many layers you have and things like that. So I like to work with it off. Now, of course, if you want to preview things and see how they look, you can turn it on and then just preview it out and see how it looks. So that looks pretty cool. But if I'm still working, then I'd probably just turn it off and be like, okay, yeah, the motion blur is turned off. I can turn it back on at any time. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover today, guys. Um, congratulations. You just made a quick little motion graphic. So, I mean, I know it's not sprite animating, but these techniques are pretty much the basics of sprite animating inside of After Effects. I'll catch you guys next time.